All right, folks, a quick message before we get started from our sponsors, React Health. React Health, formerly 3B Medical, a leading provider of sleep, sleep diagnostic, and respiratory products. Now back to the show. All right, let's get these pre-cals started. Emerson. Yes, sir. What's going on this week? What's going on today? You know what? We are kicking off Sleep Tech Appreciation Week. Boom. Woo! Mic drop. Mic and drop. we have got the president of the AAST, Larie Fordyce, right. joining us today. Super excited about having her. She is, we serve together on the board. She is one delightful human being. I am really looking forward to having her on today. Wow. All right. Yeah, I would say I, I've been connected with her for a long time on LinkedIn, but have never had the opportunity to actually speak to her. So I'm pretty excited about um, you know, get to know her a little bit and, and definitely want to know more about the, the world that she lives in. You know, the uh, medicine in, in Canada is very different than the U.S. So I'm going to surprise her with a question about uh, the differences between U.S. And, and Canadian sleep medicine. So stay tuned. I'm going to interject at some riveting moment in the uh, and, and completely. So surprising. <laughs> yeah. no, somehow not surprised with that. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say it's it's interesting to bring that up because uh, preventative and social medicine is something that we do in med school, and it's always interesting to see how different countries uh, apply that. And so it would be interesting to hear her take on it. Yeah. Same time, I'm I'm excited by the fact that we have somebody who represents all sleep techs, the president of that body kicking off uh, the, the week. So it'll be very fun, a lot of fun to do that. At the same time, we've got swag. And yep. Uh, yep. Robert. Looking, looking handsome as ever, man. Hey. Is, is, swag, is swag an old term or is it just merch now? Uh, merch. I think merch is a better word since we're a yeah. band. <laughs> Pop stars. So let's call it merch. Yeah, We got to figure out, uh, uh, folks out there, we'll, we're going to figure out a way to uh, let you get in on this as well. We've got cool merch, so we're, we'll we'll find a way to get that over to you. But pre-cals are over, and let's get the show started. All right, folks, before we move on to the next segment, very quick message from our friends and sponsors, 3B, or rather, React Health. They were formerly 3B Medical. For more information, be sure to go to reacthealth.com or contact your local sales representative. Now back to the show. Lights out. Welcome everyone once again to another episode of Sleep Tech Talk, the sleep podcast. I got the shirt on this uh, this time. So, hey, if you're listening, you got to move on to YouTube and check out the swag, all right? Uh, thank you all so much for joining us. We're going to talk a little bit about the swag, swag in a little bit later, maybe. But thank you all for joining us once again for another show, because this is a very, very special show. We kick off Sleep Tech Appreciation Week, and uh, that celebrates all of you, all of us. Thank you all so much for doing what you do as sleep techs. Without you, the world couldn't exist as it is today. And that is the truth because there'll be more, uh, more car accidents, more road traffic accidents, more heart attacks, more strokes. But because of the uh, life in general is better and we appreciate each and every one of you. So with that being said, make sure to spread the love, share, like this episode, share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you're listening on the podcast, like and share once again. And with that being said, I'm going to toss it off to Emerson to tell us what we have on the agenda today. Emerson, over to you, sir. Hey, thanks, Jerry. Uh, so glad to be here today uh, with Robert and Jerry and our guest, Larie Fordyce. Larie uh, hails from Calgary, Canada, a little farther north than the three of us, and we're absolutely thrilled to have Larie with us today. Larie is the current president of the AAST. And you know, we couldn't have a better president than Larie right now. Uh, we serve together on the board, uh, just a 
fantastic leader. But when Larie's not uh, leading us in sleep technology, she is the director of sleep services of Maple Respiratory Group. She has been actively participating in sleep medicine for more than 25 years. She's a clinical sleep educator and has also worked in multiple capacities in sleep technology throughout her career. She has a passion for teaching and education in sleep technology. Larie has written chapters for the Fundamentals of Sleep Technology textbook and works books. And she has uh, had the privilege of speaking in multiple meetings regionally and nationally for quite some time. Larie, uh, it is absolutely fantastic to have you here today. Uh, love working with you on the executive committee with the AST. But one of the things that we like to do before we really dig deep into our conversation is to talk about how you got into sleep technology. So Larie, welcome. And if you can take a few minutes and tell us how you got here. All right, well, first of all, I'd like to thank you guys for having me on. It, it is an honor, so thank you. Actually, to be quite honest, I never actually wanted to go into sleep. <laughs> I started out as an EEG tech by trade. And uh, one of the modalities you could pick was sleep. And I said, I am never doing that. It just so happened that um, once I finished my schooling, I ended up getting a job uh, in the States. So I'm from Canada. So I did get a job in the US. And uh, unfortunately, probably a month into me being there, the sleep lab needed personnel. And they're like, you know what? You can read sleep studies. You know how to put electrodes on people. You come and help us out. So that's what I did. And that's pretty much how I got into it. Well, wow. so Lori, you've you've got you've got so much you've been doing, uh, especially with Maple Respiratory. Uh, we certainly want to talk about what you're doing with the AST, but you know, with Maple Respiratory, you're not only working in Canada, but you're also doing a little bit in Latin America. So if you can give us uh, for especially for our friends in the United States and even around the world that listen to to our show. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing at Maple Respiratory in Canada and Latin America, and, and that we'd love, love to hear about things they never get to interact with. So sleep in North America is pretty much the same. What we do in Canada is pretty much what you guys do in the U.S. there. But in Latin America, it's actually quite different. And we just went over there just to, you know, open a sleep lab and, and see where we got to. So here we are. We're probably nine years in. We run 77 level one sleep studies, 363 days a year over there. So we have a ginormous organization. We have over um, 50,000 patients on PAP therapy. So that just gives you an idea of, of you know, what we do over there. The nice thing for us is, you know, we take what we've learned in North America and try and bring it over there. You know, to, uh, most of the doctors over there are, um, respirologists, but they haven't had any formal training in sleep. So we kind of bring over what we know. I've been over there several times We in our sleep labs. We, you know, teach them the way that we should be teaching them, you know, from electro placement to all our policies and procedures. So I'd like to say we have a top, you know, notch lab over there, but we definitely, you know, have a lot of studies that we do. Our new trainees from here in Canada, we don't do that many studies, so we actually send them over there so they can really get their feet wet and see what it's like to, you know, get on that hamster wheel and be like, get in there and sink or swim. <laughs> Laurie, just for the sake of our American audience that may not know this, uh, guys, respirologist is what we call pulmonologist here in, in the U.S., I did have a question. Do you see in, in South America or uh, did you say South or Latin America? I'm sorry. Uh, We're in Colombia, so it's Latin okay. America. Yeah. Okay, Latin America. So um, there, do you see uh, predominantly OSA patients or is it uh, a different, different uh, mix of or just general mix of patients that you see in the labs there? Primarily, it's OSA. So um, in Colombia, that is mostly where we see our patients. We started out in Bogota, which is their capital. And now we're in nine other cities across the country. Uh, the other thing within Colombia, their altitude is 7,500 
feet above sea level. So um, just on altitude alone, we do see a lot more uh, altitude induced you know, sleep apnea, which you guys wouldn't necessarily see. Here in Calgary, we're 3,500 feet above sea level. So we see a little bit of it, but we don't see too much, but our average SAT is 93% just because of altitude, which we would consider normal. But yeah, over in Columbia, it is primarily OSA patients. They have a significant obese population. So, and uh, you know what, we don't actually have, I can't imagine, it's unfortunate, but people that have other sleep disorders, they would be on the bottom of the waiting list. Lorraine, you know, for our listeners, you know, when you start talking about altitude, unless they live in where you do or Colorado um, and a few other places, they probably aren't going to understand some of the challenges that patients face with altitude sickness and things like that. What sort of, uh, from a respiratory disturbance standpoint, um, and even maybe a cardiac standpoint, do you see in the, these patients that are suffering from an altitude-related sleep disorder breathing? We see a lot more uh, central sleep apnea, which you probably wouldn't see if you were at sea level. And then, of course, when you do end up with patients that have central sleep apnea, you are more predisposed to cardiac conditions. Um, you know, with the high altitude, which most people, you know, definitely, I don't think appreciate until you can see something like that, is there's also a lot of, when we look at what low saturation is, when you're with these people, you, low saturation, we, we see a lot more people and you're, you know, if you weren't used to that, you'd be, oh my goodness, like, what should I do? Should I get in there? But, you know, it's just normal for everyday life over there. No disrespect to the RTs, but I used to see them back in the day when they were new to <laughs> new to running sleep studies. They'd see the DSATs and they'd want to intervene right away without it's normal for these patients. So it's interesting that you brought that up that, uh, hey, this, you know, you may be distressed by just looking at it, but this is very normal in these cases. And I think even though, even us as sleep techs, you know, it's kind of like, oh, that's perfectly normal where, you know, somebody like you say, just walking by would be like, aren't you going to do something? Right, right. <laughs> so I, I know that this is a little bit of a loaded question, but, um, and, and maybe too complex uh, for the time that we have here, but just how sleep medicine a little bit different in your area versus what you know to be true for sleep medicine in the U.S.? So in Canada, things work quite a bit differently. As you know, we're the socialist medicine people. So it pretty much, every, um, like when we talk about healthcare, healthcare is free. It's not actually free because we pay for it through our taxes. But everybody um, is, a, you know, is entitled to free healthcare, if you will, which means we have extremely long waiting lists. Um, what would be an average waiting list for you guys for someone to get into the sleep center? Just probably four, four to six weeks, I would guess. All right. So for in our, where I am currently, for to get in for a PSG in our public system, it's upwards of a year. And if you are a pediatric patient, it's anywhere from two to three year wait list. Oh my goodness. OSA takes priority. So if you have any other sleep disorder, you're kind of on the bottom of the list. And mostly it's just because we, one, we don't have enough um, sleep docs to see all these patients and the amount of beds that we have. It's just people are waiting. We do a ton of home sleep apnea testing because it's the only way that we can get the garden variety OSA patients out of that line, get them, you know, diagnosed and treated on AutoPAP. So AutoPAP is what we use primarily. We don't use a lot of standard or fixed pressure CPAP. Did that answer your although question? Although those patients can be, you did, that's perfect, actually. Uh, it, although those patients are complicated because, um, you know, you, when you talk about elevation and the use of auto CPAP and central sleep apnea and low oxygen saturation, that's a, that's a complicated patient. Not complex necessarily, but it may be, may be complex, but, but complicated for sure. Right. And so because we have those issues, one of the things that um, the body 
our governing body here has suggested is that everyone that does home sleep apnea testing, which are usually done by DME companies, they must have um, some sleep experience. And actually all the home sleep apnea testing that are done have to be manually scored by an RPSGT. So they're trying to do things the right way, as well as, you know, like I call them the garden variety OSA, like some of those patients that you say, you know, are more complex, they probably are in certain other areas. But for us, in order to get them, you know, out of the line and, you know, treated quicker, it's the best that we can do. But we definitely use um, patient monitoring for every single patient. And, you know, that has been a tremendous godsend for us because then you can see the patients, you know, in almost a nightly basis, right? And being able to fix those things. Well, Laurie, that's, I love you being able to describe all of that for us, um, you know, because I think it's great for our listeners to understand that, you know, for, for the most part, sleep technology is, is, is going to be the same anywhere in the world. Clearly, depending on geography, it changes and politics can change it, payers can change it, and certainly, you know, uh, those demographics. But, you know, thinking about that, one of the things I love the most is that you're you know our leader in the AST and how did you get involved in the AST and if you can give us a sort of a quick story on your journey from being a director or maybe a committee member to being president and then you know what are some of the things we're working on with the AST in in this the the remainder of this year and next year one of the reasons I actually got involved with AST is I guess sort of political, if you will. Um, provinces in our country, we had a significant amount of, everybody wanted to open a sleep lab because there was government funding. So because everybody did that, we used to say that if we were the Taco Bell labs of <laughs> on every corner because everybody knew that that's where the money was. But that didn't mean that you had good technical quality. So one of the reasons I actually joined AAST was so that you know, I could start to learn a little more about policies, procedures, and what are the things that, you know, we should be doing as good sleep techs. And that's one of the things I sit on a lot of committees in Canada, as well in Alberta, just to make sure that, you know, people that are doing studies and things like that, that they are doing them the right way. I started out just as, you know, as a regular member. I got into um, be a committee member and then once I um, got into the membership and communications committee, I sat on that committee until they decided to kick me off, you know, after you served many years, I moved to program committee. And then eventually um, I decided to apply for the board of directors. And um, a great honor for me is I get to be the first Canadian president. <laughs> but being on the AST has been phenomenal. You know, just being a member and all the things that are available to me, as well as, you know, what you can learn. The best thing for me has been relationships, you know, having relationships with all of you, um, you know, getting to see what people are into, what people are doing, and, you know, just being able to have those relationships, as well as networking and, you know, knowing what's going on in the field, not just, you know, your overall, just your night tech. Does that sound a little bit like rambling? I really do love being a member of the AST, and I'm glad that all of you are as well. Uh, Laurie, that's not rambling at all, and we <laughs> appreciate that. Um, hey, Emerson, did you want to did you want to ask something? I saw your mic going. Yeah, I just you know as as you know, I know that that Laurie's passionate about all the the tools that we built. Laurie, what are a couple of things as we begin to wrap up? that you know you're you want to champion or or people to know about with the ast um you know because i know you've done a ton of work to to bring resources to our membership uh what are some highlights as we begin to wrap up today around you know uh, the programs and the offerings that we have you know one of the things is is i think would be this our ccsh program I think it is definitely something we should all be proud of. You know, you became an RPSGT at one point and that's kind of where your career ended. And then I think as, 
you know, time has evolved being sleep educators, you know, when BRPT came out with CCSH, that was um, definitely something you could look for and get another credential under your belt to show, you know, you were still keeping up in sleep. The AST also has other modules, you know, please check out our website, you know, the EKG module, especially if you're just starting out, you know, learning more about, um, you know, cardiac issues in the sleep lab, because you don't always get to know, um, you know, what's going on if you haven't been taught properly. And sometimes when you read it in a book, it's not exactly what you're going to see on screen. So we have a lot of those things available. You know, as we are going to be celebrating Sleep Tech Appreciation Week, uh, I'd like to say, you know, we are going to be offering uh, for your listeners a 22% discount on any of the <laughs> any of the information that we have materials. So um, you guys can will have the information on how you know your listeners can go on and redeem that discount. Laurie, thank you so much. And, and uh, listeners, uh, did you hear that? A 22% discount. So please keep that in mind. We'll try to get that information on the, in the show notes that kicks off Sleep Tech Appreciation Week. So I think that's a great gift for, for the Sleep Techs. Uh, Laurie, it's been fantastic. We are out of time, but we thank you so much for taking the time out. I know you're extremely busy running all these, uh, all these labs and the AAST president. So we thank you so much for joining us uh, today. Uh, our listeners and our viewers out there, we thank you as well. We sincerely appreciate you being Sleep Techs and appreciate you being our listeners and viewers. We can't thank you enough for that. Once again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and to share this podcast, this, this show with your friends and other Sleep Techs out there. But as we are out of time, on behalf of Robert, Emerson, and myself, Jerry, we say thank you. And until next time, lights on. Okay, just a few seconds for a word from our friends and sponsors, React Health, formerly 3B Medical, a leading provider of sleep, sleep diagnostic, and respiratory products. Their Luna G3 family of PAP devices are FDA approved and offer cellular modem standard in CPAP, AutoPAP, bi-level and bi-level ST modes to treat all kinds and a full range of sleep disordered breathing. The magnet-free line of PAP devices or PAP masks include Siesta Full Face, Siesta Nasal, and the Rio 2 Nasal Pillows Mask, all of which have less than 1% refit rate. And uh, for more information, go to reacthealth.com or contact your local React sales representative. Now back to the show. All right. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> had some laughs. <laughs> Folks out there, we just had a laugh before uh, during the pause. So uh, what'd you guys think? Wow, you know, Laurie is one of those people that, you know, she's got so much going on to be not only operating in Canada, particularly Western Canada, but then in Colombia. You know, Colombia is such a fascinating market. They have, you know, uh, reimbursement for CPAP and, you know, her company really dove into that. And, you know, you can just see her passion about excellence and detail. You know, she's, she's a champion for that, for, for sleep techs. And then just, you know, what she's excited about with CCSH and what the AST is doing. It was great to hear all of that today from her. I agree. The, uh, the, the thing about Columbia, I thought that was really interesting because one of the sleep labs I worked for, the medical director, he was very keen on move, going to get something started in Columbia. And I was thinking, of all places, why Columbia? But he had studied the demographic, he had studied the economy and such, and I thought it was something else. But uh, it was very interesting. It never took off from him, and this was 10, 15 years ago. And to hear that they've been doing this for nearly a decade in Colombia, I found that very, very interesting. Robert, your insights? I got two things. First of all, does this make our show international? I mean, we've, we've gone outside of the U.S. Hey. Absolutely. Hey. Okay. So I'm going to say we're an international. Is international. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're an international phenomenon now. And, there you go. Uh, and, and, <laughs> and secondly, she did a great job breaking down 
the difference between sleep medicine in you know her area there in Canada versus um, here in the U.S. And you know, it's just it's interesting to hear the different nuances. Um, even some of the legislation that's been put in place that still keeps quality, uh, you know, as part of the overall, care, you know, care of the patient. Uh, you know, she talked about the fact that their their DME providers actually are the ones who dispense the home sleep test, but it has to be scored by a registered sleep tech. So, you know, there's there's a quality component, even though the dispensing piece may be a little bit different. So maybe some of those channels are different than than what we have here uh, in our country. And then to hear, you know, that. They don't do as many in labs in her area, so they have to send students down to, you know, uh, to Columbia to actually perform in lab testing is is pretty amazing. What did you guys think about uh, her role in the uh, in the AAST? Well, I love the fact that she is the first uh, Canadian president of the AST. That that's fantastic. Oh, cool, right? Yeah. yeah, it just you know it speaks to our diversity. You know, even though the, the AST, part of that acronym is American, you know, it really represents the world because, you know, we, the, the organization isn't, isn't built for, for just one country. You know, the sleep technology is the country. You know, we're a community and whether you're in the United States or Canada or anywhere in Latin America, Asia, Europe, you know, we're, you know, the AST is, represents all people that are performing tests and taking care of patients in our sleep medicine community. I agree. It, it was it was very good to hear that that when she said that that she it was really cool. So yeah, you're right. It does reflect the the diversity of all of us as sleep techs out there. Yeah. Um, for, and then, of course, the exciting part is because she's on. Our read, our listeners, readers, our listeners are going to get a 22% discount on education. That is a fantastic uh, savings for you know our listeners. That you can't beat that. Fantastic. 22%. Stuff. There you go. There'll be a QR code that we'll we'll share in the uh, in our post. Most definitely. Yeah. Um, Can't get that from any other podcast. I'm just saying. There you go. Right. Exactly. In fact, <laughs> there's no other podcast like this one. So that's right. <laughs> like and subscribe. Absolutely. And hopefully, talking about that sort of thing, we're going to be getting the the uh, the merch. We got to remember the word is merch, not swag. We're going to have merch available for for all you listeners out there. We're going to find a way to get this available. And uh, we may even have a discount code in the future as well. So stay tuned for that. But uh, on behalf of Robert Emerson and myself, Jerry, Dr. Gerald George Money wrote, thanks once again, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and especially to share. Make sure that you share the love with everybody. And until next time, thank you so much. Cheers. <laughs>